Hi there and welcome to Cambridge Zoocast. I'm David Willow and I'm here to bring you yet another piece of very interesting research from Philippe. Thank you David. Uh, my name is Philippe Smoins. I'm a third year PhD student here at the Department of Zoology in the University of Cambridge and at the British Antarctic Survey. So Philippe, what's your research about? What are you doing? So I'm currently in my third year of a PhD project that lasts for four years. Uh, I'm doing a research on Antarctic and subantarctic insects. Mostly what I focus on is on molecular biology, DNA, genetics, okay. and ecophysiology, which is a relationship between ecology and physiology. Uh, that's the biggest topic of my research, but I also do some morphology and taxonomy as well. So what's the kind of, where's, where's the research going? What's the kind of direction you want to push it in? So the, the biggest point about these insects, uh, specifically from this area, is that they are quite sensitive to any type of change, either clim climatic, geographic, or human impact. So it's interesting to understand how they are affected by, by all of this and how other uh, related insects or fauna uh, could, could be affected and due to their relationship with the flora as well, that could have implications. So these are some of the possible outcomes from that. Oh, that's good. What kind of got you into it in the first place before you came here? So my, uh, I came from Brazil, so I did my undergrad and my master's there, both in entomology. And then I had an interest in of pursuing uh, insects, uh, stu insect studies and Antarctica and like the polar regions, yeah. but I found a way of connecting that, even though it's hard because there aren't many of insects around that region. So. so what kind of got you into Cambridge? Was there anyone you knew here or was it just cause it's, you know, a very good place to do research? Or? Yeah, it was a big coincidence. I had two uh, op op opportunities for a PG, one in Melbourne, Australia, and the other one in Cambridge. I ended up choosing Cambridge uh, mostly because of Cambridge being a big international hub. Uh, possibility to make a lot of connections, uh, being a big university city in the sense that everybody comes in here, so the biggest, the brightest minds of the world will eventually come and you can make these extra connections as well. Yeah, I guess one of the big advantages of Cambridge is everyone comes to you to yeah. talk about your research. And yeah, you don't need to go people. to them. So. Yeah, oh, that's good. So you talk a lot about Antarctica, which is obviously a really exciting area, it's a changing area in the world. Do you have any research that you actually do down there or do you travel much as part of your work? Yeah, well, uh, being in the third year already, so I had two opportunities to go south. So I spent in total six months and a half doing field work. Yeah. Uh, most of it, four months in total, spread across two field seasons were in Chile. And I also had the opportunity of participating with the Chilean Internet, uh, Antarctic program. So I spent one month and a half in Antarctica with them. Yeah. In one of the uh, in some of the the Antarctic islands in the South Shetland archipelago, and last but not least, I had a, an amazing opportunity of uh, participating on a twenty three country expedition that went across Antarctica. Oh wow! So it was the Antarctic Circumnavigation Expedition, which went from Punta Arenas in Chile to Cape Town, passing by South Georgia and Bouvet Islands in between. And wow. some standard challenges as well. So it was an amazing experience. Yeah, once, lots of good once photos. In a lifetime. And, yeah, yeah, yeah once once in definitely. A lifetime, definitely. <laughs> yeah, that sounds really exciting. But I'd be really interested to know what actually happens back in Cambridge when you're working here. So yeah, well, uh, as you can imagine, like most uh, of what I do here is getting the samples that I uh, took from the field and processing them. Uh, in some situations, as in the ecophysiology experiments, which I had to execute. In the, during my field work, I'm just with the data now, so I need to process that and do like statistics, uh, tables, like standard stuff. But with the molecular side of my study, I need to get the samples that I brought from the field, extract DNA from them, uh, sequence them, send to the appropriate companies to have my sequences and then do my analysis. So I guess out of everything you discussed here, what's kind of the most exciting thing that's really driven you through this research and you might want to take forward into something else later on? Yeah, I think that to start with, like just the fact that this tiny animals live in such a, an extreme spot in the world, like such an extreme area, is just like, that was what amazed me at first. Like, 
how can they do that? To, to be fair, like the technically the biggest land animal in Antarctica is one of the insects that I'm working with. Oh wow! Okay. So because if you think about the other ones, like penguins and they're really uh, yeah, they're, yeah, they're par- at least mo- for the, for a good part of their lives they're aquatic. So that's something that like drives my research in the sense that how did they end up there? Uh, what are the conditions that they can tolerate? So this is what I also hope that will help other people improve uh, the science around the, this taxa, these animals, and maybe have a bigger impact for the whole, com- the whole international community. Uh, we just hope that it does help. <laughs> so is there an area you'd like to kind of continue working in when you finish here, or are you not sure yet? What I really like about biology is the evolution part be it either genetic, physiological, biogeographic, doesn't matter. Uh, as long as I can keep working with this more general topic, evolution, is I would be totally fine with that. Oh, that's brilliant. Thank you, Philippe. Uh, this is Zucast signing out.